One of my New Year's resolution for 2023 was to travel more, especially after what felt like a two year travel ban from the pandemic. So I started this year off with a bang by planning a trip to Spain and Portugal for 25 days, but it wasn't the type of traveling that I typically do. It was my intentions this year to try a digital nomad lifestyle, incorporating both travel and work and see if it was truly what social media made it out to be. The digital nomad lifestyle is often perceived as working from a beach in paradise with unlimited freedom and flexibility. While there is some truth to that, it's also important to be aware of the realities of the lifestyle before making the leap of faith to do this for the long term. What I had decided to do was take a 25 day trip to Europe to experience it for myself and discover if it's a lifestyle that I saw myself committing to. With the world as my oyster, I did research on the popular countries for digital nomads. There are hubs around Asia and Europe, and so I decided on two hotspots for digital nomads. The beautiful town of Javier in Spain, as well as Lisbon in Portugal. So based on what I've experienced for myself, here go six realities as well as tips to make it as a digital nomad. So let's jump right into it. Reality number one, be prepared for the unexpected. It's not all sunshine and beaches, and I mean this in the literal and figurative way. I thought I would escape Vancouver for some sun. I thought it was going to be a lot warmer here in Valencia since it's always sunny but it gets a little chilly during the winter so today it actually was like three degrees out and unfortunately I brought a lot of like summer -y clothes and this was basically the warmest uh, clothes I have and so I wore this and I think I need to also get a jacket because I'm going to be here for like three weeks and I think it will just be way too cold to go off what I currently have. I soon realized that winter is still a thing even in the south of Spain. So I ended up caving in and I got myself a jacket here at Zara, which I believe is originally from Spain. This goes to show that being a digital nomad requires constant adjustment to new environments and overcoming unexpected events and even obstacles. It's important to be open-minded and to adapt to new environments that you aren't familiar with, which comes with traveling and working in different places. My first tip in overcoming this reality is while I've gotten the occasional tip on being spontaneous and going with the flow, I find that having a plan opens the door for more positive experiences, spontaneous moments, and reduced hiccups all while saving money. It doesn't mean that you need to plan everything to a T, but having an overview of your work and travel expectations, as well as having the money side of things organized by having a budget would really help your digital nomad experience go more smoothly and mitigate unwanted surprises. So first thing is first in setting up a plan is to set realistic goals for work. Are you aiming to follow a normal work schedule or do you want to front load most of the work before the trip and follow a more relaxed work schedule? That way you don't feel anxious if you aren't as productive compared to when you are back at home. Other questions you can ask yourself are what projects do you want to take on and how much progress do you want to make while traveling? So having clear work goals can can really help you stay focused and motivated during your trip. It also helps to have a list of things you need to do and places you want to go so that you could maximize the travel part of your trip. I like to keep a flexible schedule and insert new activities in my day when I have some free time. I also enjoyed keeping a travel journal to stay organized as well as reflect on my experiences. Next, establishing a budget is critical to make sure that you don't put yourself in financial hardship after the trip. While being a digital nomad can be expensive, I find that if you plan accordingly, it can also be quite affordable. So it's important to have a budget for both work and travel, including accommodation, transportation, food, eating out, necessities, as well as having special experiences such as surfing, museums, kayaking, winery tours that are going to be unique to your travel experience. That way you're going to keep track of your spending and don't find yourself overspending. So in short, having a plan is key to making the digital nomad lifestyle work. 
work. It helps you to stay organized, focused, and prepared for the challenges that come while working and traveling in different places. Reality number two are the challenges of being alone and isolated. So if you are planning to travel alone, there will be moments of loneliness and isolation from being away from family and friends for an extended period of time. For me, I really miss my dog Lucky. As part of the digital nomad lifestyle, you find yourself eating and experiencing new things, which is great and it's the whole purpose of traveling. But after a while, it can get old fast and quite lonely without anyone to talk to or share the experience with. So my tip in overcoming this is instead of traveling by yourself in hotel rooms and Airbnb, look into co-living spaces. Being part of a community while being abroad will be a big part of whether you have a positive or negative experience as a digital nomad. Finding a group of like-minded people and learning about each other really cultivates creativity and the feeling of belonging, which will make your trip that much fonder and fun. Reality number three, technical difficulties. When you're on the road, it may be difficult to find reliable internet as well as comfortable spaces where you can be productive and actually get work done. In addition, you won't have the typical setup that you have at home with your adjustable chair, your ergonomic keyboard, Board, your second monitor, etc. So having the right setup is also important so that you can be productive and also maintain good posture for your health. So my tip in overcoming this is to try co-working spaces and investing in the right tools. I mentioned co-living spaces, but there are also co-working spaces which are designed to give you an optimal environment to work in. They will have high-speed internet as well as ergonomic chairs and even second monitors if you're lucky. This really helps when you are trying to get work done and don't need to worry about unreliable internet. The one thing that you should invest in is a good setup. And I can show you my somewhat light and compact setup that I bring with me when I need to work on my computer. So let me show you my setup when I was traveling abroad. So I wanted to show you guys my remote work setup and this is usually everything that can fit inside a backpack and it's all compact and packable. So just to kind of show you and go through each one at a time. This is one of my favorite purchases from Korea but it's like a foldable keyboard and of course you need a mouse. This is like a tiny one that could fit. It's not the most ergonomic but it does the job. And then this is something that I invested in recently. It's like a portable monitor and and as you know, an accountant who works with numbers and spreadsheets, I definitely need a second monitor. So that's something that is really important for me as well as the main laptop. And you will notice they're being propped up right now. So if you look in the back here, there is this portable stand and this folds and it just goes right into a really compact case. And then for the portable monitor, you just need to be creative in getting something to prop on it. I get uh, board games or other things like that. So that is my remote work setup and everything could basically fit into this little pouch that I have. So it's a little messy. It has all my cords and everything, but yeah, that's my remote work setup. Reality number four adjusting to new cultures. With new experiences, sometimes comes culture shock and being able to adjust to them. You grew up doing things a certain way that you feel most comfortable with, but when you travel to a new country, it can be flipped completely upside down. To give you a small example, for me, I'm used to shops in Canada being open at certain times, let's say 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., and being able to rely on those times to plan my day. When I was traveling in Spain, there was something called Spanish time, where stores might not necessarily be open during regular hours or they may be open late which can make you wake or not be open altogether. Something interesting I learned was siesta time which literally translates to nap time. So I came out to explore but apparently every single store is closed right now. I don't know if it's because it's off season or if it's because it's lunch time. I do know that there is like Spanish times where there are closed for a few hours during lunch, like two to three hours for lunch. So maybe that is the case. So my tip in overcoming these cultural differences is to just embrace it. I mean, I was used to doing it a certain way. I also really came to appreciate the more relaxed vibe in Spain and not always 
things happening on the tee and just taking a step back and you know being part of that culture and also being part of siesta time so it can be easy to think the way that you grew up was the best way but perhaps the most important mindset when traveling is being open-minded and being willing to understand new cultures and even better partaking in them so at first i had trouble understanding why spanish people ate lunch at 3 p.m or how they ate dinner at 9 p.m but having experienced and partaking in the spanish way but with a local i truly had the best of times I learned how to slow down and really enjoy the moment, even if it means just having a meal. It's about being present and truly enjoying the company that you are with. And this is a big part of what I came to appreciate about Spanish time and Spanish culture is that sometimes you get carried away with your siestas or your meals with your friends and family and you're just really in the moment. And sometimes that just may mean opening up shop late sometimes. Reality number five, challenge of work-life balance. We may be familiar with a go-go-go mentality when it comes to traveling, trying to pack in as much things as possible within the allocated time of vacation that you are given. But the digital nomad experience is different in that you have time on your side. You may be in one location for one month, so there isn't as much of a time crunch to see, do, and eat everything in the new destination. However, it may be difficult to try to be in the right mentality and to relax and enjoy the new place as a local while getting your work done as if you were back at home. It can be difficult to stay focused and motivated to work, especially when you are in a new exciting environment. So my tip in overcoming this is with a new environment, establishing a new routine can be vital to maintaining a healthy work-life balance. I can share my experience with struggling with exactly just this when I was in a small town called Javia in Spain. After overcoming the obstacles of being halfway across the world and being jet lagged for over a week, I still found myself waking up at 5 or 6 a.m. It really helped to have a self-care routine of meditation, journaling, and reading as well as making breakfast and then slowly getting to open my laptop to work. So this morning routine was a luxury that I didn't get to do back at home when I woke up at 7 or even 8 a.m. However, establishing this routine made me feel really good about myself, which set the mood for the rest of the day to be motivated and focused. After getting a few hours of productive and focused work in in the morning, I had time in the afternoon to actually explore Javia and enjoy the beautiful weather. If I had no plans, I would even work in the evenings because of the time zone difference in Europe. Europe compared to North America. With dinners being late in Spain, I would also be able to make plans to go out for dinner after work and really partake in the dinner culture in Spain where you eat, chat, talk for hours while enjoying a few drinks. This is something that I really enjoyed with being in Spain and getting used to the culture. Reality number six is constant uncertainty. You may have income and job uncertainty or you can have a medical emergency away from home. So having a backup plan in case of these instances will really give you a peace of mind when you are traveling as a digital nomad. So my tip in overcoming this is to kind of loop back to tip number one on having a plan and a budget and having a rough idea as to how long you will be away from home. Project your income and expenses as well as have a financial safety net like an emergency fund, which is going to be crucial so you don't find yourself in a tricky situation, like being in a foreign country with no money. Another tip is to have medical insurance when you travel. You can either take out a private travel insurance or if you are only going to be away for a few weeks to months, a hack is to take advantage of your credit card benefits that often include medical insurance and that could save you money and give you the coverage that you need. I have two credit cards that focus on travel rewards, which give me free flights, but also include things like flight delays, lost luggage, lost cell phones, and even medical insurance up to $1 million. So before I left on my trip, I just called the credit card provider where I'm going and how long I'll be gone for. I also took notes of the fine print for the medical insurance as well as familiarize myself with the processes so that I can get the treatment I need in case of an emergency and get reimbursed for it. Becoming a digital nomad may seem all glitz and glam like that you see on social media. My first experience working and traveling 
traveling and being part of this co-living and co-working experience was really inspirational and parts of it was like the dream but it also required careful planning and some realities you may not have been prepared for overall i had an amazing experience in spain and portugal and really lived it out as a digital nomad i also took a ton of vlogs of my experience there so if you're interested in seeing that comment down below that you are interested in seeing any sort of travel vlogs and i'll make sure to post that in my next one in the meantime check out my other videos here thanks so much for watching and i'll see you in my next one